What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Dream Star Toys Slingshoot, their version of a masterpiece, stylized version of Slingshot. This was sent to me by Mr. Michael Rogers. Thanks for sharing this with me so I could take a look at this. This is the first in the series of five figures to make the combiner. Superion, of course, it's going to be a stylized version of Superion, but let's take a look at this guy. He's got some really, really nice paint on him. It's pretty much 100% painted, all surfaces, uh, maybe a few here and there. I mean, actually, as I'm looking, pretty much everything except for maybe these fingers is painted. Nice metallic red. You got a lot of tampos on here, just all over the place. A little red, white, gold, copper here on the legs. I mean, everywhere there's detail. There's a lot of it. Like, it's really detailed everywhere you look. Here on the side of the arms, you got some detail here. We'll see this more in jet mode, but some gold, silver, Bobby's thing, go silver and gold. Um, here's the bag. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah, really, really nicely detailed. He does come with some weapons, so you get these two guns. They are very uh, difficult to get into the actual hands, but they look like machine guns, on the, at least on the front. They look like Gatling guns or whatever, but they will fit into the hands. There's a little tab right here, and there's a little slot in the palm of the hand. It's just tough to get it, and then these fingers are not... They don't play ball like they do that, stuff like that. They just come right off the ball joint. These remind me of KFC-style hands. With these little teeny tiny ball joints that pop off very easily. Your best just not even messing with it, but try to get this straight into there. You can wrap the fingers around. Once you get it in there, it's fine. It's just getting it in there. Those fingers like to pop off. So there you go. And you get two of those, of course, so you can get one in each hand. And there he is with both guns. Those do look good. I like how it looks. It's just kind of a pain to get it in there, but it does look nice. You get one other accessory here, which is his flight stand. Now, unfortunately, I'm missing an adapter. It did come with this adapter, which is for jet mode, and that works. But I need another adapter for the robot mode. And it basically pegs into the back of his butt there, and then you can hold it up. Here's what it would look like if you had him on that stand. It is nice, it just, I'm missing that part. I did check with Mr. Rogers and he doesn't have it either. Luckily I did an unboxing, unboxing and I went back and looked and it wasn't in the unboxing. There's also a light feature which I'll show you in the jet mode. It just works better in jet mode. But there you go for that flight stand. Now you can store things away in this if you prefer. You can take the guns. Those will fit right here on the side of the stand. Uh, coming to the other side you have this little piece which I'll show you what it's for in a second. But this piece can peg into here. I thought I could pick in. There you go. So that can kind of store on the bottom. So you can really store everything away on this stand while you're displaying it. Now, this piece is actually included as a spudger. Spudger slash tool. And you do need a spudger for this figure, but you can use a regular spudger too. But this little thing actually comes back here and unlocks this. So if you push right here, the little slot, press that slot and then push up and that'll free up this joint here. So let's go over the articulation on this guy since we just did that. So the head is on a neck that rotates up and down. So it goes back and forth like this. And then the head itself will rotate and the head is on a ball joint as well. So that can go up. So you can get that up, come on. It's very tight, so sometimes it can be tough. So up to there, down to there. It works pretty well. Really nice looking head sculpt. It's very unique. A reimagining of Slingshot. I mean, it does look cool. All that nice detail and color and paint there. The shoulders rotate all the way around on this joint. They go up to here on the shoulders. There is a rotation at the bicep. You have a double jointed elbow with a little bit of this automorphing feature here, so just watch the elbow. You can see how that comes down. And it does look cool. It's all detailed and painted and it really looks nice. So you get the full bend out of that. For the hands, you have a rotation at the wrist. You have a dice roll joint, so it gets 
up and down there. You have individually articulated fingers, but I hate how these fingers work because they're on ball joints. They pop off. They're very, very similar to KFC style hands where the fi fingers are just very fiddly. They're constantly moving on you. They don't stay in place and they're just annoying to pose and to get the gun into. <laughs> so just be forewarned with those, but they do articulate. They have one, two pins and then a ball joint at the base and the thumb is on a ball joint. So it can go around and then back down to there. You will need to put it into a fist for transformation. So we might as well do that now. God, I hate the way this works, but you want something like that for transformation so that's all folded away. All right, continuing down, we have a rotation at the waist. Rotates all the way around freely. You have that ab crunch that we freed up earlier. It goes all the way down to there. It does work for the combiner mode as well, so you get that piece of articulation there, but that's really well done. Nice, tight joint there. It holds very well. And then to lock it back in place, you just push it back down, and it'll click in place and lock. All right, continuing down, you have hip skirts here. These will rotate up and a little bit out of the way because it's meant for transformation. If you get these up and out of the way, these legs rotate up. They're very squeaky. There's a little notch here, so you just got to watch out for that notch and go around it. But the leg can go up to there, back to there on a squeaky joint, out to the side on a square friction, rotation at the thigh. By the way, no ratchets in any of these joints. I didn't mention that earlier. You have this, again, stylized knee with some auto-morphing the kneecap itself, and then this piece comes down. It really does look good, but again, no no ratchets there. You have ankle tilt all the way up to there. You're really far on those. Um, nothing really back and forth. If you unlock the foot, you can kind of cheat and get the toe down, but it, it doesn't really work like that. So this little tab is holding it in, and you want that in because that's what gives it the stability. So I would recommend you don't unplug that foot. But and for size comparison, there it is next to the MP44 Optimus Prime and the Fans Toys Iceman. I forgot his, I always forget his name, Firefly. Anyway, uh, fits in nicely. He's a little bit taller than the Fans Toys Jets in robot mode. Uh, a little bit shorter than Optimus though. So it still fits in in a Masterpiece collection. I think it's just, it's a bigger size robot overall compared to uh, you know, the counterparts of the G1 style. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his jet mode. I will say it is a little bit frustrating of a transformation. There's some steps that are kind of tough. And then also the instruction manual is out of sequence. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently than the instruction manual. But let's start with the arms here. Go ahead and open up this panel here, this panel on the bottom. Rotate this to the outside. And then that's going to rotate up and become part of this arm here, so it should look like that. Take the wrist, should have it rotated like this with the fist on top. That's going to accordion down and sit in here. You do want the fist, the fingers in a fist, but like I just showed you, they like to pop off these ball joints, so just get them as best as you can, curled up, and then rotate it in. You're going to take this entire thing, and that's going to accordion down, and this is going to fit right here in that little circle piece. All right, so get that compressed and that one's ready. So same thing on this side, we'll do it a little bit faster this time. So those arms are pretty much ready. Now we'll take care of the chest. The chest is a little bit uh, frustrating, but we're going to take this piece here and unpeg everything from the back. So come to the back here, take this backpack and we're gonna unpeg it from the side. So there's a tab right here, same on this side untab that tab and that'll free up the entire backpack. Then we're going to take off these pieces so there's a tab here so you're going to release that tab on the back and then pull it out. It's actually pegged into the back of the arms. It kind of holds the arms. Kind of a little ingenious design there. Flip this around and leave it folded up like this on the sides because we're going to use that later, right? Same thing on this side. Fold this up, flip that back and let it sit on his back. That's going to free up all of this, which is what we need to do next. So go ahead and pull these arms up just a little bit. And take this panel here. That's going to flip open. The head's going to go underneath as we flip this up. Get this out of the way. This is just tabbed in right here. So you're going to unpeg that. And this is going to come back and rotate all the way around. It's on a double hinge. And the head's going to end up inside there. 
And then on the back side here, bring this down and that's just going to sit. It actually ends up inside the cockpit like that. Okay. On the front side here, we're going to take these arms. Those are going to accordion down into here and don't push it all the way in. Something on this side, accordion it down. We're trying to make some clearance here. So push it down, but not all the way down. All right, next we'll come to the back here and take care of this nose cone. This nose cone is on a slider, you can see right there. It's kind of tricky, but you want to slide that forward and just be gentle. I don't, that doesn't feel good. <laughs> Make sure you slide that all the way forward. And yeah, this piece likes to fall off. It's just tabbed in right here. So let's just leave that off for now because it's going to keep bugging us. Bring this down and around the inside piece there. And then push this nose cone back in. And now we're going to bring these pieces down, and that's why we have the shoulders oriented like this. So we can bring these pieces down on these accordion parts, and they're going to clear right here. Okay, so bring those down and around, tab them together, and there's your nose cone. And now that we have that in, we can take these arms, you're going to come down and tab into the sides. There's a little tab right here that's going to work its way into the arm. Make sure you get that pushed in all the way. And then this piece is going to push inwards and tab into the side. All right, so same on this one. Bring this down all the way. Tab that in and then bring this up and around the side. So next we're going to take care of the legs. So first take these hip skirts, rotate these up and then in. So we're going to sit kind of in like this on the inside of his pelvis. Come to the back here. And we do have to do some reconfiguration here with the feet. I, I wanted to note that this back of this foot should be configured like this with the thumb. I had it the other way. I had the thumb facing the other way around. But you won't be able to transform it properly. So it should look like this on the back. It actually fits the best when you have it configured like this. Right? And the hand, the fingers are actually folded down and inside underneath that hand. Alright, so go ahead and take this panel here. That's going to fold in. Lift this up and then it's going to collapse down. It's kind of tricky to get it, the sequence, but it's got to fold down and flat like that. That's how this is going to fit into here. All right, unpeg these feet from the inside. You can fold that in. And this is going to come around and just tab in here like that. All right, same on this side. Unpeg this from here, fold that in, bring this around and tab that in. And rotate the feet. 90 degrees, so they end up like that. Open up the legs, and we're going to take care of all these pieces here. So we'll do this one first. So go ahead and unpeg this wing from the inside. Fold that up. Unpeg this from here. And then unpeg this from here. And then all of these are going to rotate around. Basically 180 degrees. Unpeg this from here and fold this open. And now we'll take care of this leg. So there is a tab right here. It's a little tough to see. You might need a spudger. And I guess you could use the spudger they gave you, but this little tab right here is going to fold down. And then we have to re release this knee. Now the way this knee works is you're going to push it down and forward. It's on a slider, so it's got to slide up and then off of the joint that it's attached to. It's a little bit tricky to get it up, but you want to slide it up like that. So this piece here and that's attaching to this little slider piece right there, right? So when you go back, you're going to do the same thing. Slide it down this time, all right? Open up this panel here. That's going to allow us to take this entire leg. It is tabbed on the inside, so lift up this just a bit. and allow you to take this entire thing and collapse it down, right? Uh, and again, this panel fell off, so I'm just going to leave it. And now that you have that collapsed, make sure you have this pushed in all the way. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble later transforming it and uh, I hate this knee. It's it's a frustrating knee to deal with. But make sure you have that collapsed all the way. Now put that in and then take this panel here. That's going to come down and that's going to tab in on top of that. Push the foot back in and that can just sit like that. Come to the top and we can fix this thing here. So this is going to open up down here. There's a little tab right there or panel. Take the entire piece, 
and that's going to come down and tab into the top there. This piece is going to sit inside of here. There's a tab right there, a little teeny tiny tab. Straighten up this peg, or this uh, wing and this wing, and that's what it should look like on one side. All right, so go ahead and do the same sequence on this side. So to the top here, and now we're ready to slide these together. There's multiple tabs. There's one right here and here. There's two right here that can go into there. You have to open up this tab right here on the inside of the leg. You might need a spudger or something to grab it. Oh, shoot. There we go. And then there's one, two, three tabs back here holding that tail together. So you kind of want to get them all together. Start with the top first and work your way back. Right, so go ahead and collapse these legs down. Make sure this tab makes its way in. That's one of the more important tabs, that one in the middle, and it likes to move. So make sure you get that one squared away. Then make it in. Nope, it didn't make it in. Here we go. And then we'll make sure the top tail gets tabbed in. These pieces back here are going to rotate and then tab together. Right, and the last up here is going to be the wings, of course, so we've got to straighten this out. So basically unpeg these wings. They're, they're all kind of collapsed in. So unpeg this from here. This is tabbed in here. Fold that out. This missile is going to rotate inwards and then just sit inside that, that wing. It actually kind of clicks into place, but it's, it's a tight fit. So make sure I get that. And then open up this piece here. You're basically going to unaccordion the entire wing. Rotate this around, and that's going to tab into the top of the wing. Or the bottom of the wing, sorry. And then rotate that wing around. All right, same on this side. Fold that in. On accordion all of this, rotate this around, tab that in, and then rotate the wing around. Those are basically ready to go in. Now we can do this sequence here, so make sure everything's lined up. You do want this at an angle. This has to be kind of, um, not unpegged, but this has to be up, the, angle, the, the legs have to be angled upwards, not straight. And this is going to tab in, so there's a lot of tabs here. So. I'll just point them out to you. So there's one, two, three, four up there. There's two tabs here. And then, let's see. We got some tabs here. They're going to go in up to here. So get those first. Make sure you get all lined up. And it can be a tricky sequence to get it all in. And bring the wings down and then get those tabbed in as well. All right, take these panels here. These can come around. That's going to tab into the top there, so just line that up. Here we go. And then go ahead and come on this side, same thing. Tab that in. And there you have Slingshoot in his jet mode. It is really, really beautiful. Just getting in here is a nightmare, but look at all that detail on there. You get all those tampos. Really nicely done. Here's the back. It's got a nice metallic sheen all the way across. Some details down here that are kind of hidden. The engine detail right here, you can kind of see through. That looks good. Nothing really in the cockpit. I mean, it's more just robot parts, but there's a little piece there for the look of it, so that's kind of cool. But all in all, really nice looking at it. Just, just a nightmare to get here, but you can fold up the Landing gear if you don't want those. Uh, we'll leave this one open because we're going to show you the flight stand. But you're going to take this adapter piece here. This is going to fit in to here. There's two little slots right there. So get this pushed in. It's a, it's a tight fit and that's good because you want it to be a tight fit. Then go ahead and grab the stand that we used before. And it's just going to peg in right here. And there you go, there's the jet. Looks pretty darn nice on there. 
you can angle it here just kind of get it whatever you want but that's a good looking thing now there is a light up feature down here you'll need a spudger to get it out of there but you can open this up I recommend just pulling the whole thing out it's on a little peg and then twist this off this is the cover this is very difficult to get out um, I had to get a uh, and don't pull on the light because you'll probably break the light but I had to get a little blade to get in between this and this and it's scary because it feels like you're gonna break it but just slowly work this circuit out of here it's just, just very very tight just like everything on this it's kind of a pain All right but I put three of these in here I mean I don't know if this is even the right battery I don't think it is but it did fit in there it is magnetically controlled so let's put that back in and this is going to be my gift to Mr. Rogers because they are hard to find batteries and they're a pain to put in so I'm not I'm just going to leave them in there but there you go so go ahead and plug that back in and then go ahead and grab a magnet I'm just going to use my unicron eye there and there's the light it is blue there you go there it is all lit up with the display light you can move the light kind of wherever it's not all that bright I mean it's fine but the fact that it's blue a little strange but you can aim it for display purposes so there you go and one other thing you can do and I don't think this is meant to do it but you can there's little slots on the side of the gun uh, these will actually mount right here onto the top of the wings and then the front of it actually looks like a little machine gun so again I don't think that's meant to go there but it does go and I was trying to find a spot for storage and since they look like machine guns I figured hey why the heck not you can have some machine guns in addition to your little missiles I don't see a way to detach these missiles they look like they're permanently attached on there they do have some nice detail and paint on them but I don't see a way to detach them same for these little side missiles I don't see a way but looks nice with those guns but that's an option in case you want it and for size comparison there it is next to the fans toys goose pretty much a very similar size a little bit longer on the front there uh, but same kind of height same width pretty much maybe a little bit wider but fits in nicely with other masterpiece scale jets all right now let's get slingshoot transformed into his arm mode Go ahead and come to the bottom here. We'll fold up these landing gear. While we're at it, might as well fold up these two. Get those all out of the way. We're gonna work on the wings first. So get the wings unpegged from the side. You can flip this panel over, rotate here, and bring that down. It is actually gonna tab in right here on the top, but we had to take care of these wings. So fold the missile back to the outside. Fold this panel up. Pull this out of the way. This is going to come and peg in right there. So peg that back in. Fold this. We're basically going to accordion it up like you had it before. So accordion this back up. And this is going to come down. There's this tab right here. It's going to tab into the side of the engine. There's a very small hole there. It's translucent, so it's hard to see. But there we go. And then this is going to sit down. And basically up at an angle, that's the way they show it. Now you could just put it straight, but according to the instructions, it does go at an angle. All right, same on this side. Take these legs uh, apart because we got to get the hand out of here, unfortunately. So grab your spudger and take this apart. Lift this up. That's going to unpack from inside there. And I'll you take the whole legs apart. All right, then we'll take care of this piece here. So fold this around to the other side, fold this back, and then we're going to rotate all this inwards. It's going to end up sitting just like it was in the robot mode. So get this down. And we're going to leave this piece up, but the other part's going to go in. Right. So get that oriented. This is going to tab down into here. All right, and then this, you can just get that tabbed into the outside of the leg. 
Then we're going to take care of this. So go ahead and open up this panel here. That's just tabbed in. And you're going to take the hand, we're going to rotate this so that you have the hand like that. All right, next, go ahead and rotate this up. And this is going to tab in. Let me close this. This is going to fit in this little slot right here and then tab in right here. So this should be closed, first of all. And then make sure this lines up. That should work its way through and then tab in just like that. All right, on the other side, let's do all the same things. And then finally, we're going to combine these two, you know, make sure you have this lined up. But these two little tabs on the inside are going to make their way into here. So you want that all lined up. I'll just move these fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And these should be upwards, sitting kind of straight. So you get these arms tabbed together. All right, now we got that all squeezed together. It should look something like this. This hand is going to slide inwards, one tab. This is supposed to tab together. Ah, it's tough to get it. I might get it off camera, but this is supposed to get together and tab together. And then these just sit on the top, these two wings. They don't, they don't tab, but they just kind of sit in the middle at the top. All right, so come to the bottom now. And this panel fell off. So I'm just going to leave those off for now. But we're going to take this entire thing. This is going to unpeg from the inside. It's actually pegged in down there. Open this up all the way. And then we're going to take this panel here. It's supposed to open up. It's very, very tight. This is a combiner joint there, which I can't seem to get out of there. So I'm going to leave it because this is not my figure. I don't want to break it. But that combiner joint is supposed to come out and, and kind of sit outward so you can actually use this arm. But since we can't do that, you know, I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, but we do want to take these right here and these little panels, and you're going to need a spudger to pop these out. And maybe this is why they give you a spudger for this guy. Because there's so many little things like this. But So work those out of the way to the outside, and that's going to plug in to the side of the arms. Ideally, you could actually take the arms out. Um, you don't have to, but I was able to do it without taking the arms out. But get those pegged in. So that's what it should look like. And that's what holds that piece in. And then you should be taking that combiner joint out. But mine is so tight I can't. I'm not going to risk it since it's not my figure. And there it is in arm mode. Uh, it doesn't actually mount to the stand. I just kind of jerry-rigged it there just to show you. But here it is. Pretty cool. Um, there is a gap here just because of the way it transforms. Like I mentioned, there's no panel here because that's where the hand ends up. But it does look like that. Here's the inside. You got all that detail. Now you can kind of change the transformation. This is kind of how it matches up with other combiners. right? But you can actually rotate this and then you can come to the back here and then use the little tool they gave you. Or you can use a spudger, but press down on that little tab right there. And that will release this joint here. And now you can open up that one. So you can actually get this up quite a bit. But the combiner joint's going here. So I'm not sure really what the purpose of that is. Because this joint bends far enough on its own. Right? You get the that joint there. So I guess you could do this. And get it a little further. So maybe that's the purpose. And this thing sometimes falls off. It's just a little panel that goes right here. You just tab it back on. No big deal. Um, you can see inside there, that's where the combiner port's going to go. Some little tabs and notches there. I assume it's all going to lock in place. Um, a pretty big, good-looking arm. It's just the hand is really, really tiny. Speaking of the hand, for articulation, you have an in-and-out joint here, dice roll joint. So you can't rotate the hand down and get it up and down. Uh, this joint is for transformation. You have a double ball peg for the thumb. So it goes up and down, rotates all the way around. And then you have one, two pins. So you can get the thumb folded however you like. Each finger is articulated, individually articulated one, two, three joints. So you have a ball peg at the base and then two pins for each finger. They definitely look spindly and small, uh, especially when you ball it up into... Uh, fist 
it's uh, extremely small. And for size comparison, there it is next to the Zeta Toys, so Paratron arm. I believe these are actually supposed to be the same bot, obviously different c c continuities, but you can actually see the <laughs> the new Dreamstar Toys is actually bigger, just slightly bigger due to the nose cone, but the hand is tiny. I mean, what's up with that? That's really small. I guess they went for the all-in-one gimmick, and that's what made the hand small, but that just looks way too small. Uh, but there you go for a size comparison. You can tell this combiner is going to be about the same size as the Zeta Toys Superatron. So final thoughts on the Dreamstar Toys Sling Shoot. Let's start with the positives. I think the paint and sculpt work on this is phenomenal. They did a really good job. Robot mode, alt mode, everything looks good in terms of the paint and sculpt and detail. Articulation is also really well done. I like the posability, especially in the robot mode. I mean, it really can get some, some nice poses just due to the amount of... Uh, Articulation they put in, uh, then the knees are kind of cool, the automorphing feature in the elbows and knees, that really does look nice. Negatives wise, uh, this also has to do with articulation, these fingers are awful. The hands overall are just very poorly done. The fingers fall off, they pop off the ball joints, they're annoying in robot mode and in vehicle mode and in combined mode. They just get in the way and they're just irritating. Uh, I wish they had done better hands in this, but um, they do work, it's just you got to fiddle with them. The other negative is the transformation is just a nightmare. It's not fun. There's pieces that are not intuitive, don't go together that well. You have to get the sequence perfect. Uh, and as a as a reviewer, I've realized recently that m I can't put as much emphasis on the transformation because a lot of people get these things, transform them into a particular mode, and then leave them forever and never transform them again. So if you're that kind of person who just transforms it maybe into robot mode or into jet mode and you're planning to leave it like that, then it's probably going to serve your purpose and you're probably going to be happy with it. Now, if you're like me and you like to mess with it, you like to transform it, planning to switch it between the modes, then I don't find this enjoyable. And I actually wouldn't even recommend it because it's just a frustrating experience. And I actually don't know if it'll last just due to the materials and the overall feel of it. I'm not sure if you can withstand a lot of transformations. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.